on this episode of Car Warriors. The Car Warriors All-Stars take on a brand new group of challengers. Welcome to the party! And both teams are in for a long 72 hours. The whole village is gonna be Can the challengers overcome an early setback? This engine is really stressing me out. Or will they crumble under the pressure? Get your own car together. You need him. We're about to just leave right now. The All-Stars' main problem seems to be each other. Why don't you just call it the Rich Evans Show? You know, you guys stand around and have all these little huddles all day. Get over here and start standing. Will this cost them the build? The body shop is closing. Hey, bro, the body shop is closed. Anything can happen. So get ready. You know what? You're so full of shit, your eyes are brown. Car Warriors. No, no. It's going. Starts now. They are the Car Warriors All-Stars. A dream team of world-class car builders. Rich Evans, I do it all. Rhino Templeton. Nobody can do the painting that I do. The best in the business. Tommy Ichiotis. I'm a hot-tempered Greek that doesn't take crap from anybody. And they're out to destroy everybody. Nicole Lyons, we're gonna tear the other team up. Each week, they take on small-town garages from across the country in a 72-hour custom car build throwdown. And when the clock hits zero, three of the world's most renowned automotive experts break down every detail of their rides. If this doesn't light a fire under your ass, nothing will. This is the wildest car building competition ever. This is Car Warriors. Hey everybody, I'm your host Marcus Took. Welcome to Car Warriors, the most insane, intense car building competition you have ever seen. It's a David versus Goliath battle with both of our teams competing on the exact same playing ground. This is our all-star side, complete with state-of-the-art tools, equipment, and machinery to get the job done. And this is our challenger side. They have exactly what the All-Stars have. No more, no less. Their goal? To radically transform these mystery junkers into over-the-top custom rides. But here's the catch. Each team has to get it all done in just 72 hours. Now, before we show you this week's cars, let's meet our teams, starting off with the Car Warriors All-Stars. Rich Evans, team leader. Tommy Ichiotis, paint. Rhino Templeton, paint. Nicole Lyons, engines and mechanics. Joel Hoffman, engine specialist. Ian Roussel, fabricator. Tina Sharp, interior. Scott Owens, interior. We're gonna fry those challengers. And now, let's meet this week's challengers, Leadership Designs. Leadership Designs is a young group of challengers from Temecula, California. They are prepared to make any car into a fully customized winner. Nick Ashby, team leader and builder. Danny Henches, car audio specialist. Jason Russell, extreme painter. Alex Sinclair, audio and video specialist. Ryan Hernandez, team coordinator. John Guerreri, engine specialist. Luis Ramos, upholstery. Alan Lee, I can do everything. Someone's gonna have to give the All-Stars some handy wipes because they're gonna be crying. What's up, guys? What's up? Challengers, welcome. Now, teams, your goal this week in 72 hours will be to transform these cars into the most unbelievable, over-the-top, amazing custom rides anybody has ever seen. You're only limited by your creativity and our 72-hour clock. Now, when that clock gets down to zero, that's when our panel of expert judges comes in. And they're going to pour over every detail of your build. They're going to judge your design, your paintwork, your interior, exterior, performance. Every decision you've made, the judges will be looking at. And they're going to ultimately decide who wins and who loses. Okay? Now, All-Stars, you guys are the best in the world. And it's your job this week to prove it. Challengers. If you guys can win, not only do you get bragging rights, but you get to take home your car and their car too. All-Stars, I got a message for you. 
Ya estuvo. That means you guys are done. If you guys lose, you go home with nothing. All right, teams. This is the moment we've been waiting for. The cars you'll spend the next 72 hours building are 1986 oh. El Caminos. This car, it's not a car though. What is it? What are you gonna do with that? The El Camino first rolled off American assembly lines in 1959. It was known for decades for its unique look and style before being discontinued in 1987. On the customization base of the El Camino, uh, there's a lot that could be done and that's what I'm excited about. We thought we were gonna end up with a bigger build. We're honestly lucked out by getting an El Camino because it's two-door. It's gonna be a badass car for what it is. Well, guys, before we start the clock, there's one more thing I need to tell you, okay? Once that clock begins, that's when we start our engine challenge. The first team to get their car on the lift, engine removed, wheel to the box in front of the car, wins their choice from one of these two impressive motors. Engine number one is a Chevy Big Block, a naturally aspirated 454 pushing over 480 horsepower. Engine number two is a Chevy Small Block Stroker Motor, naturally aspirated with aluminum heads pushing over 420 horsepower. All right, teams, good luck, because Car Warriors begins now. Cut it more. Straight back, straight back, straight back. Straighten it out. As we're competing in the engine challenge, all I can think about is ripping this motor out and doing it the fastest. Go, 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 take it, take it. If we don't get the 454, I think that it kind of kills some of the morale because everyone wants that big block in that car. Johnny, you need to be doing that. Get down in there. Done this a million times, get in there. Hey, Nicole, you had the bolts, right? Yeah. Come here. I got bolts. Hey, hey, someone get a nut. Get a 17. Come on. Bring that picker in. Coming in. Watch yourself, Rich. Good. Hold on, hold on. Bring the rack down. I need a bolt. You got to grab over there. It is complete chaos right now. Go ahead. Start lifting it. Start lifting it. All right, this is good. That's good. That's good. I got it. I got it. Watch out. You got to get by me. He's almost there. It's not going anywhere. The All-Stars and Challengers are in a tight battle in the engine challenge. Hey, bring that picker in. Come in, watch yourself, Rich. The first team that pulls their engine out gets their choice between the big block or the small block. I got it, I got it. Watch out. Almost there. There they have it. All-Stars, you guys win the engine challenge. Congratulations. It feels so good to win the engine challenge. I mean, that always gives us a boost of morale right off the bat on these builds. Which engine is it going to be, guys? Well, on this one, we're going to let them have more work and go ahead with the big block. We're going to take the small block, which is going to be a better application for our car. All right, that means... We don't want to have to screw with the big block. New motor mounts, trying to make things fit. You know what that means? You guys have a motor with a little bit less power than their engine. Is that going to be a problem? Because that oh, car in. It's really ironic. We got the engine that we wanted. To us, it's a little bit more custom throwing a 454 in one of these than it is just leaving the stock 350 in it. It takes a little bit more talent to put a 454 in. Now that you finished the engine challenge, you know what time it is? It is time to open the parts cage. Go get the parts for your cars, guys. The Car Warriors parts cage has everything both teams need for their El Caminos. Suspension packages, drivetrain packages, transmissions, coilovers, and a wide variety of wheels and hand-cooked tires. This car needs giant tires on the back. That's the look. On the hand-cooked rack, there's 275 4017s, and those are perfect. Everything is at both teams' fingertips. Joining us right now to talk about these cars is a man who knows something about these. It's Tony Ginty from Original Parts Group. How much can these teams do with these cars? You can go all kinds of directions from changing the nose to ground effects, roll pans, um, build them as a low rider, build them as a muscle car. I see a big block there. That's going to be a lot of fun. First thing the All-Stars grabbed was that Monte Carlo front end. The Monte Carlo front end is probably one of the best things you can do to an El Camino. So as soon as they grab that, 
ice cream to grab the tonic cover because that to me was the other key item you needed in this build. Now they have to go through and either do something pretty crazy in the bed of that thing, they gotta figure something out. As I'm racing through the parts cage, I'm thinking about the big block engine in this car. There isn't exactly the right part to compensate for the weight of the big block engine. These are lowering springs, right? And we were gonna be in trouble. Although it seems like there could be problems putting a big block inside an El Camino, the challengers first have to think about the six major steps toward building a car. Design, interior fabrication and suspension, engine fit, paint, engine installation, and reassembly and interior installation. First up, design. The theme we're coming up with is called Bad Penny. We have a really cool paint job planned for this car. We're going to be airbrushing on the hood of the car a large penny with some flames. You know, large scale, it's gonna take up a better portion of the hood. We're gonna have some realistic black flames coming off of it. So it's gonna be a monochromatic. We're not gonna go over the top with a bunch of colors that are gonna clash with the rest of the car. We decided on pearl browns or earth tones. It's gonna be a classy badass. This is not going to be a car that's kinda of like over the top in your face. With their design clear, the Challenger's engine problems are still looming. Nick's plan is to mock fit the engine to see what they may need to fix to make the engine fit. And then get the car into paint so Jason has the time he needs for the bad penny design. The All-Stars know their small block is a perfect fit, and they want Rhino to be the big star of this build. We're going to take this El Camino, and we're going to basically uh, give it a two-tone look. We're going to give it a, an orange base. We're going to cut it up with some flames. We'll drain the whole thing around it, but I'm going to pop in another layer of flames that will overlap it. We want to blow the competition out with the paint job, and Rhino has a fantastic combination of colors and designs. I like the metallic look to this. A sunburst base coat, maybe a tiki, maybe we'll even call it the freaky tiki, huh? Ooh. That's badass. I really like that. I hope that we get this car to him in time to do all the things that we talked about. With Rhino set, Scott has to tackle the interior design, which he hopes will go perfectly with the paint scheme. I'm planning to build a new dash, and I'm planning to build new door panels, and I'm planning to build a center console, and do like maybe a flame cutout. The main focus is gonna be doors and dash, and then uh, whatever time left over for the box and everything. Rich is adding a vintage Chevrolet Monte Carlo front end to the All-Stars El Camino. The distinctive looks of the Monte Carlo and El Camino define Chevrolet's style in the 1970s and 1980s. Then we're going to move to the back and do the tailgate, and I'm going to give it like a four-inch slant forward that, you know, no one's ever done before. Rich's body modifications and Scott's interior design could be the secret weapon that wins it for the All-Stars. But on the other side of the garage, the challengers may have a secret weapon of their own. How do you use this? Their engine girl, who's supposed to be engine and mechanics, hasn't touched the engine compartment yet. I have the coolest job. Um, I'm a hairstylist, full-time. Been a hairstylist for seven years. What is her role on this team? The red lenses and all the screws that are with them, put them in a gallon Ziploc bag and put them somewhere. Ryan's my fiance. I decided to bring her on this build because she really has never got involved really heavily on the cars. She's helped here and there, but she's never been really a team member on something like this. When I asked her, so what do you do? She said, I definitely don't do engine and mechanics. I do a lot of like organization because, you know, boys, they do not know how to keep anything organized. It's always, where's the nut? Where's the bolt? Where's my screwdriver? No, no, no. Get all those and gather them up and put them in one bag. Come back. Ryan, why is this this way? Ryan, why is that that way? Where's that coffee at? See it right there. Did you put a lid on it? Can Where you put one on it? lid? There's lids in either there or there. I saw them. I'm Leadership Designs Garage Bitch Girl. I don't know if I would ever let her build a car for me, but I would definitely let her clean my house. While Nicole continues to be wound up by Ryan's presence, Nick's mind is spinning, trying to figure out the tire mounting machine. My team leader is over there. He doesn't know what he's doing, and he's probably going to break something, scratch the rims, or destroy the tire. Don't stand there. Fine, keep wasting your time doing that shit, you dumbass. Nick, you need to go ask him how to use it. Let me I'm him. serious. I'm walking away. Then walk away. A couple of the guys tell me, Nick, you should probably ask the All-Stars 
how to operate this machine, what the trick is. Hey, you threw all your wheels on, right? No. Why? Ian has. On the tires? Yeah. yeah, Ian has. He's the man. If you use those machines on the tires, just yeah. that 20s? Uh, 20s, huh? Yeah, we did 18. Uh, Nicole, my wheel. Nicole, right? Oh, Lord. What's that? Um, wheels. We've never used that machine before. Uh, don't even start. I asked Nicole for her help, and she basically threw it back in my face. You guys came to Car Warriors, and you know you know how to balance the wheels. Hey, I've never, I've never mounted a tire in my life. And my mechanic has never used that machine. That's a problem. I think she pretty much told him where to go. I'm not giving the Challenger team any help. They got to be crazy. Don't ask a girl how to balance a damn tire. Please. You know what she said? No. Your team came on Car Warriors and you came and mount a tire? Yeah. That's what she said. Then she went back to work. With step two well underway for both teams, the All-Stars decide to simultaneously complete step three and had no issue at all with getting that small block to fit like a glove. They're going to have more obstacles with that big block. That's why I didn't want it. <laughs> I've done this before. With the engine in, the All-Stars can now focus all of their efforts on fabrication so they can get it to Rhino for his massive paint job. Meanwhile, for the Challengers, they're having some serious clearance issues with the big block. The Challengers big block engine is 149 cubic inches larger than the original El Camino engine. We dropped two and a half inches just by the weight of this engine, and it's way too bouncy. It's not going to ride right. The car would bottoming out everywhere, and that was no good for any kind of uh, performance challenge. It's going to be a lot of fitment issues I think we're going to have with that engine. The headers that are on that thing right now are not going to work. They're probably going to hit the actual frame. It's going to hit no matter what you do because it gets right. more narrow at the yeah. bottom. We basically have to cut out our entire AC condensing system and ditch the AC because it won't fit in there with the 454. We're probably going to have to pull the power steering off the front of that 454 because it's probably going to hit the steering column. Everything's hitting every piece it possibly can inside that engine bay. We decided not to take the big block engine on purpose. We basically screwed the Challengers, and the plan came to fruition so nicely. This engine is really stressing me out because there's so much fabrication needed. I'm not familiar with the 86 El Camino, but it's quite simple. It was never made manufacturer for put that big block on it. So now I need to fabricate a set of header. We have to, to fabricate a motor mount. We have to relocate the steering pump. I had to do some simple tasks and we had enough time. Now it becomes a nightmare. After the All-Stars won the engine challenge, Nicole elected to take the small block. We're going to let them have the big block. We're going to take the small block, which is going to be a better application for our car. But during the mock fit, the challengers realized that the weight of the big block was going to make the car bounce all over the road. So right now we're trying to build some solid steel spacers and see if we can keep that front end up and keep it from rubbing. Also, the engine fitting required lots of new fabrication, which posed major challenges for leadership designs. Lift the engine out, let's take the power steering pump off, and let's take the headers off. I agree. We had to pull the AC out. Luckily, we're clear on that side, but the power steering like hit the steering column, and now we had to pull that out. The frame hit the headers, we pulled those off. So now we have all these other parts that are laying on the side of the car, so we're having to actually go backwards right now and try to get this stuff to all fit correctly. Now that the challengers know what needs to be done in fabrication to make the engine fit, Nick's plan is to get the car into paint and then drop the engine in later. Meanwhile, Rhino has begun painting the hood of the El Camino in hopes of getting a head start on his massive paint job. But he can't do anything else because Rich is taking a lot of time fabricating. They really want me to do a kick-ass paint job on this, but if they don't give me the time, it ain't gonna happen. So hurry the hell up. And we have about a 24-hour paint job. Everybody will go to sleep while I'm up all night trying to paint the car to make it look good while they took their sweet ass time. I don't think Rich gets it. This car is really gonna be one on paint. And when Rich does these body modifications that soak up a tremendous amount of time, he puts us at a disadvantage. How far are we out? By the way. Getting this thing in the booth. Oh, I'd say probably maybe eight hours. Eight hours? 
It takes time to build a car, Rhino. Well, I'm just saying, dude, I need time to paint. That's all I'm saying. You done with the hood yet? We're here for quality. This is a competition, you know that. We're only 20 hours in. What are you sniveling about, man? As soon as you get done with the hood, we should be done. <laughs> I'm done in about 20 minutes, dude. What about you? You want the doors? Can't spray the doors separately from the car. Whatever you want, man, you just tell me. I'd like to hurry up and get the car in the booth. Is Reiner going to be able to do the paint job that he really wants, or is he going to have to cut corners and give us a lesser paint job because of a lack of time? Okay, I'm hurrying, Rhino. I can hear everybody bitching about why the car isn't ready, or Rich is slow, and this and that. Hey, you know what? Get over here and start sanding. The jams could be sanded, the inside of the bed could be sanded. And you know you guys stand around and have all these little huddles all day, and I'm sitting here just moving and moving and moving. Hey, you know what? Put up or shut up. Now nearing the halfway point of the build, tempers are starting to flare up on the challenger side. Johnny just woke up from a nap, ready to go, and he is demanding that the engine be put in immediately, which goes against Nick's plan to put in an after paint. I come out and they're still working on the body. The car is not in paint yet. I was really upset because I needed the time for the engine bay work. There's a lot more that just dropping the engine in, dude. Johnny's starting to stress out because he does have a big goal in front of him of getting this 454 in the car and running. But let's not forget that Johnny is the one who wanted the 454, whether or not we won or lost the challenge. You keep bitching about this engine, but even if we would have won that challenge, you would have chose this engine. You no, chose it. Yes, no, you did. Enough. You I chose it before we even started the challenge. And I thought about it while we Oh my God, dude, don't even give me that. I don't think Johnny's in over his head on the engine build. I just don't think that Johnny's ever been under this kind of pressure and he's reaching his stress point and his breaking point. As the tension mounts, Johnny is restless and starts painting the engine bay to speed up the process. You guys, don't start spraying that yet. We gotta run prep ball on everything well, or else it's just gonna flake don't. off. It does not flake off, it'll be fine. He has a big job ahead of him and I think the time limit has him a little bit scared. You don't have to clean all the spray. It's not, you're not a painter, Johnny, okay? Oh, okay, sure, I'm not a painter, okay. Johnny's on edge, to say the least, and I don't think he will make it past that. Wasting time. I give up. That's it, I'm done. Put your own engine in. Put your own car together. I'm real pissed off right now, you know? Nothing's going right. Uh, everything's falling apart. Don't say you. I'm done because... I okay, you and walked out. Okay, stop. We need to address the engine now. Unless you can put the engine in, you need him. We're about to just leave right now. Seriously. I'm not even playing. The ticking clock is causing Johnny, the Challenger's main engine specialist, to really stress out. That's it, I'm done. Put your own engine in. Put your own car together. He has just threatened to leave due to frustration with Nick's plan to get the engine in after paint. And while it might seem obvious to blame Johnny for leaving, some on the team are not blaming him at all. Everybody on the team has a job to accomplish the goals of getting this car built, with the exception of one individual. That would be Ryan. It's spaghetti in your mouth, well, not so on your teeth. When I found out about Ryan being part of the team, at first, I was extremely pissed because that's going to take one less person off of having a talent or a trait in the industry that's going to give us that upper hand. Aaron. <laughs> Don't let it go. Don't let that bumper fall. I try to stay focused on my work. Can you go around somewhere else? We've shorted ourselves in other areas which have pulled from the engine issue. If we don't yield to Johnny and let him have his way on it, he's basically going to walk. And we need our mechanic to get the engine in. We're better off right now getting the engine in and making sure that he can get it in physically in it fits it bolts in if we can accomplish that then we can run it in paint it and get it right back out if we have to simplify the paint design we do johnny took his position and used it to gain what he wanted and kind of put the whole build aside just so he could see if his engine would fit the challengers seem to be finding their way with their engine problems. But Scott, the all-stars interior specialist, can't seem to find any answers for his custom dashboard. I just keep going back and forth about you know, different ideas and different shapes, and what I need to do is just stop and build. 
Meanwhile, Rhino is not happy. It's ridiculous what's going on over there. I'm sick of it. We gotta wait around. The stupid fabrications that meant no business doing whatsoever. And they were supposed to be in my booth 12 hours ago. So the whole bill is gonna be We'll be running around the last minute trying to get everything together. And I ain't touching I ain't doing it. Too bad the rest of the car can't look like this. We're gonna have probably like 10 hours to finish this car. He's a clown. Everything would be going better if people get off their asses and help with the bodywork. That's where it would be at. Yeah, but you're not a one-man show, and this isn't your show. It's all of our shows. Exactly. Okay? You're not a one-man show. Got it right there. Why don't you just call it the Rich Evans show? Uh, call it for what it is. Oh, uh, okay. It's the Rich Evans the show. The hero. The hero. You know what? You're so full of your eyes are brown. Oh, uh, there you go. You're a one-man show, right? You're a one-man artist. There you go. Well, you're the biggest walk on the planet, bro. Oh, you're so eyes are brown, Jackson. There you go. He's the same one again. Itchy's really upset. But rather than continue his screaming match with Rich, he decides to make himself feel better by playing a little prank. You know what I think would be funny? What? To just alter this just a little bit. <laughs> and turn into kind of bitch Evans. I think that's beautiful. Meanwhile, challenger team leader Nick had to change his overall plan to make Johnny happy. Our immediate goal right now as of this moment is to get the engine in the car, make sure it fits 100%, and get it into the paint. Ready? After successfully removing the AC and power steering units and fabricating new motor mounts, the Challengers must begin the delicate process of getting the big block to fit inside the engine compartment without damaging any of the new fabricated pieces. We're good. Clear. Keep Clear. Going. Keep going. Stop it. Alan, get your hand out of there. Get your hand out of there. Your hand. Don't lose out. your fingers. Down. I'm watching it. Down. Down. It's going. Okay, we are clear. It's starting to go in. Well, we're down. You're past the first lip of the cross member. Keep going. Uh, it's on top of the engine clamp. Yes, baby. That's in. Okay. Alan. Yep. Right here, the header is laying on top okay, of the frame. So the mount has to be cut out real quick. Cut the bitch right here, yeah, right here, yeah. right here, right here. Yeah. Take one pipe and just drop it down. Yeah. They just won't be balanced yes, headers. Yes, baby. To make the engine run, Alan is going to have to fabricate some headers, but he'll have to wait to install them until after the car comes out of paint. I'm pretty sure Alan is definitely skilled enough to figure something out, but the time is running out. It's been a race to the paint booth, and the All-Stars are gonna get there first. Rich has finally finished his body work, and Rhino is about to go to work. The body shop is closing. The body shop is closing. Hey, bro, <laughs> the body shop is closed. This was my time to shine that was extinguished very quickly. I threw my hands up and said, I'm not getting pissed over something that Rich did to us. So, hey, it would have been cool, but that's what happens when you do a 72 hour build. The body shop should be out of business or work yeah, at the us. body shop should be bankrupt if you did work like that. The car is finally prepped and ready to go, and the All Stars retain a slight lead by being able to paint their El Camino first. Probably get to put some paint on this thing. Both teams may be in the paint booth, but Alan still has lots of work to do. I'm certainly not looking forward to fabricate those headers. What I want is this piece here, this piece here, this piece there, and maybe I'm gonna cut it here. I don't even know if those headers are not gonna touch on the frame when the judge is gonna drive the car. As Alan continues to work on the headers, Jason has been in the paint booth for about 12 hours. He's been awake almost the entire build, and he's dead tired. Since the start of this build, I've only had four hours of sleep. I'm very fearful that I'm going to oversee things and make mistakes. Jason's tired, and he just tripped over his own bucket of paint. What are you looking for, Jay? I, there's not enough paint. They have a rack over there. Here, come here. Damn it. I have a problem. You already looked at all of these? 
Obviously, if we're painting custom cars here and the paint doesn't match, they're going to ask us why. Come on, don't tell me we are out of that one. And we're going to have to explain to them that we ran out of FX-64. I'm just going to have to make what I got work. Hopefully, I got enough. Jade is in too much of a hurry, and now we're too low on paint, and we're having to change colors the last second to try to compensate and hope it all works out. This is not what you want to have happen. That sucks. Jason, the Challenger team's painter, has had minimal sleep on this entire build, and he made a very untimely mistake by knocking over what was left of the paint. Ah. He's been up with no sleep for the last 24 hours. If things can happen, they do, and we couldn't find any more than mixing additives, so we're having to change the shade of the color just a hair on the car. hope it matches everything else to finish the paint on this car. I'm just going to have to make what I got work. The challengers think they've found a solution, but time is running out. Meanwhile, Rhino didn't get to do his original design, but he was able to come up with an alternate land to make it look great. Because of the time constraints, I actually changed the design up a little bit. Instead of the old school woody look, we're going with wooden flames. So match the hood, make this thing still look badass. All right, let's see what it looks like. With the all-stars out of paint, they can move on to the last two steps. They will have to get their engine wired and running, reassemble the car, and get Scott's massive interior finished. The interior is definitely the largest question mark for the all-stars. Scott Owens is a, a very, very multi-talented young man, and he's very good at what he does. I just hope he didn't bite off too much with this dashboard, the gauges, and everything coming together in the door panels at the last minute. That looks pretty. I'd say right now our team is having mixed emotions on the car. Everyone's pushing forward, but it's hard to see our car just now being painted and their car's on the lift painted and they're fabbing and they're doing all the installation of their final things. Six hours. Somebody better call in a miracle. I should go grab a chair and sit down next to him and wait. <laughs> As Jason puts the finishing touches on the body paint, Nick makes a bold decision to scratch the bad penny mural that Jason wanted to airbrush on the hood. I'd rather have a car that functions and a car that's put together than a pretty car sitting there on a lift. I'm a little pissed that you know I came in here with one goal in mind, and that was to showcase my skill set, which is airbrushing, and I've effectively lost that. We've managed to grind ourselves into a hole where we don't have the time to do that. Sometimes you have to accept what you have to get done in the time frame you have to do it in. Are they pulling it out? Whoa, look at that! Wow! Don't touch it, it's still wet! The challengers are finally out of paint, but are still way behind as everything is coming together for the All-Stars and they are ready to fire up their engine. Go, 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 hurry! Start cranking! It's okay, calm your team down. It seems like coming down the home stretch, all wounds are healed for the All-Stars. On the Challenger side, Allen has finished fabricating new headers for the big block, and they are ready to make a push to the finish. In the next few hours, we're gonna have the engine running. We're gonna have all the accessories, all the stuff on the car, you know, and at that point, hopefully we catch the All-Stars. Okay, guys, we have five hours. We need to move seriously, like seriously, you know? If we don't make the deadline, if we don't win because of certain decisions that were made, the responsibility lies on me, no one else. One of the final pieces to install for the Challengers is the tonneau cover that they got from the parts cage at the very beginning of the build. All right, teams, three hours to go. After a couple of hours of installation, the Challengers are ready to see if their engine will fire up. All right, Danny, let's light her up. Damn, can y'all start a car right? Come on, turn it, turn it. Give, bring the gas. While the Challengers were installing their engine, Rich decided to help Scott wrap things up and get his interior installed. I keep myself doing this. Yeah, but it's, it's in your blood, brother. It's no fun if it's not a challenge, right? 
Right. We'll get done. The 72 hours is quickly running out, and both the All-Stars and Challengers are ready to make a mad dash to the finish line. Teams, it all comes down to this. One hour left, guys. One hour. I know we didn't get the Monte Carlo front end, but this matches up pretty well. You know what? At this point, I'm good. We have so much to do in oh, 45 minutes. I'm going to lose my mind right now. 30 minutes to go. 30 minutes on the clock. All right, this is crunch time. 10 minutes left. <laughs> I need the other handle for the store. Someone grab the handle that was sitting somewhere over here. You gotta, you gotta hurry. You got two minutes. Give me some super glue. One minute left. Fire it up. Fire it up. teams are celebrating now, but will the party continue after the judges have had their say? Find out when we come back. take the small block, which is going to be a better application for our car. This engine is really stressing me out. We're about to f just leave right now. You need him. Why don't you just call it the Rich Evans show? It's ridiculous what's going on over there. You guys stand around and have all these little huddles all day. Get over here and start standing. Uh, he doesn't make it work, then we're out of range. Three, two, one. Put down your tools, everybody. Now it's time to reveal the cars. It is time to put these cars to the test. And to judge, we brought in three of the best. Mad Mike. He is best known for turning average rundown beat up cars into over the top customs on Pimp My Ride. George Barris. He is known as the king of customizers and is the father of some of the world's most famous cars including the Batmobile and Jimmy Shine. He is a world-renowned custom hot rod expert and race car driver and holds several land speed world records. These guys are primed and ready to probe over every inch of our El Caminos. Judges, the fate of these teams is now in your hands. We judge up four components. Interior, exterior, engine bay. Not too many things good around here. And performance. Let's see what this thing can do. For the performance test, judges will evaluate speed using zero to 60 times and handling in a slalom test. Holy crap! I gotta take this freaky tiki for a ride. I love the paint scheme on the car, the flame, the wood grain, the tiki god on the hood, the way they had the uh, the switches set up for the ignition and the start and the center console, that's what set the car off. Oh, dude, anytime you drive a car that looks this good, yeah, it makes the ride much, much better. The airbag setup on it was really, really bad. The response of the car, eh. It was mediocre at best. I was expecting a lot more from the Freaky Tiki. 
I know why you guys chose this motor over that big block. <laughs> <laughs> Which engine is it going to be, guys? Well, on this one, we're going to let them have more work. Save yourself a lot of time fitting this thing in there. Wanted to give Rhino that time for that beautiful paint job. I got to admit, the paint job is what makes this car. The use of the wood grain, even in the flames, that's pretty good. I like what you guys do with the tailgate on this thing, too. Hey, you must have brought this back because you've taken it into the bumper as well. Yeah, four inch and cut the left and right quarters off. Just give it that slant. You guys did a good job on this one. Whoa! What's up with the door panels? Those were last minute door panels. Come on, you guys. That dash is really slowing me down. Wow. It's that gauge cluster. It's all foggy. It looks like there's glue on it. I just hope you didn't bite off too much with this dashboard, the gauges, and everything coming together in the door panels at the last minute. Your exterior is amazing, and your interior is, uh, is kind of all right. Looks like you guys might have run out of time. A little, a little short on time on that one. After critiquing the All-Stars car, the judges now turn their attention over to the challengers. Man, this car has got lots of power. Woo! First gear, second gear, third gear, transmission shifts so smooth, I just burn out like pop, Going down our test track here, no surprises there. Kind of handles like a stock machine. The steering on this thing sucked really bad. It turned the steering wheel kind of like, Argh! I don't know what's up with that. I think you guys laid down some pretty good paint. It looks all right. But no pinstripe on those colors. Did somebody run out of time? I'm making a judgment call to drop the airbrush. I'd rather have a car that functions than a pretty car sitting there on a lift. I think that's a detail you really could have used. You guys did a lot of work on the interior. These are really, really cool door panels. The gauges work. All stars! The gauges work. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. I screamed to grab the tonic cover because that, to me, was the other key item you needed in this build. This is this back open? Tonic cover, open it up, finish work. Oh! Wah, wah, wah. Um, are you guys planning on finishing this afterwards? All stars, I think you guys got to run for your money on this one. Your paint is banging, but their interior is banging. This was going to be tough. All right, judges, you've seen the cars. Now it's time to tally the votes. Coming up, we announce the winner of Car Warriors. Now, teams, the judges and I know that this 72-hour build has been brutal. Now, All-Stars, you guys have been fighting this week to prove that you are the best in the business. You've been trying to hold off these guys, the challengers. You guys have been trying to prove you belong on the same stage with the All-Stars. And you know you're competing for a chance to win your El Camino and theirs as well. But if you guys lose, you go home with nothing. All right, judges, you have the results. The winner of Car Warriors is... The All-Star! Yeah. 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 You know what? I think the challengers really put up a good fight. This is the closest competition we've had so far. The All-Stars giving the challengers that big block was a good decision. They bought themselves some time and cost the challengers time. When we put in the engine, it fit absolutely perfectly, just like we knew it would. We watched them wrestle that thing for hours. The reason why I picked the All-Stars is, number one, the paint. And the idea of the paint, to incorporate the wood grain into the flames. The challenges were so close to the All-Stars because their interior and their design was perfect. Had the Challenger team put a little bit more emphasis on their paint job, they would have took it. Ultimately, I think the judges made the right choice. We were pretty close, but if we had to have the time for me to do the paint job that I wanted to do... Yeah, we're gonna have the penny here. We would have won this. 
You know, I'm really proud of myself. I came into this not having the skills that my teammates did, but I did it. And the best part is, I don't have to do it again. To every member on my team, you guys gave it your best. And you know what? Your passion really showed through on what you do. You can't win everything, but I don't like to lose. So, you know, I'm taking this as another challenge to get out there and try even harder. All right, congratulations to these all-stars, and make sure you tune in right here next week on Speed on the biggest, baddest car-building competition show on TV, Car Warriors. <laughs>